Wait, a tree? <laughs> You... are not ready. I love this build. Hello, my fellow Tarnished, and welcome to the latest and greatest build guide for you to enjoy. And before we get into it, I know what you might be thinking. Really? The cool music and the slow-mo and uh, you, you, you burn a tree, right? It's like, a, like a, I mean, yeah, sure, you killed it in two, three and a half K hits, but like, really? Okay, yeah, sure, but at the same time, it can do a lot more than that. And as you're generally seeing right now, you basically become an unstoppable flame god just generally existing using this weapon and build I have to go along with it. So of course, when we start one of these things, well, the first thing to address is what kind of build are we talking about? Well, the primary stats are strength and faith, so if that synergizes with what you're already wanting to do, well, listen up. But I would also like to mention that even if you only give yourself the minimum required stats to wield this weapon, and then do anything else you want, it's still ridiculous. So, what is this weapon? Well, it is Raikar's Blasphemous Blade. A boss weapon that you get from trading in a Remembrance. Now, for those of you that haven't fought Raikar, don't know where he is, well, let's address that, though I'm not going to show you the actual fight because I don't want to spoil it if you haven't already seen it, because it's very, very cool and impactful. It's not terribly difficult, it's kind of a gimmick special weapon fight, but it's just, ah, oh, it's awesome. You basically want to get to and complete the Volcano Manor, the area surrounding it. You can either travel there up to Altus Plateau, through Mount Gelmir, and arrive at the front gates, walk in, jobs are good in, or you can do a quick little quest line for this, uh, NPC here that'll take you about 30 seconds and then she'll give you an invitation and then teleport you to the manor Once you get to the top of the lift that takes you to Altus Plateau So once you have got the remembrance beat Volcano Manor beat the boss traded in for the weapon This is what we're looking at Initially not the craziest looking weapon in the world. It's just a fairly okay flame imbued great sword that does have the quirky little bonus effect that everything you kill with it gives you health and indeed everything that you touch with the skill the ashes of war also gives you health this kind of combines to make you ridiculously hard to kill and kind of almost eliminates the need for flash but in any case it is that taker's flame the skill the ashes of war that makes this so potent because it's so weirdly randomly strong and cheap and infinitely spammable at massive range, AoE, cleaving down a line, it's just insane. And it's no slouch against bosses too, it punches massive holes in them with every single use. So you can just kite around in a circle, dodge as you do, and every single opening just lay down a Taker's Flame, and well, soon the boss will be laying down too. The only real negative of this whole thing is that it looks really awful, like I... Like, like, looking at this weapon, the only way I can describe the kind of feeling it gives me is, is squelchy. And I, I don't, I don't like it. But, we're here for power, not aesthetics. And this sword has power. So how do we turn this health regening, easily spammable, long-range, AoE, overtuned blast of damage into a full-fledged build? Well, the answer is four very specific talismans that come together to stoke the engine that powers this playstyle. Though, first and foremost, as I touched on earlier, you can either get the minimum required stats to wield this properly and then do anything else, or you can get the minimum required stats, get a little bit of extra mind, so you can use it a few more times, though we will address mana in a little bit, and then pump faith as faith to scales it. To give you an idea of the difference here, the faith soft cap, and indeed the int one, and so on and so forth, is 60, the hard cap is 80, so while it still hits like a truck at minimum faith, obviously if you want to go all in on this, pump that faith. Though by far and away the biggest thing that affects the damage all Ashes of War weapon skills do, is the weapon upgrade level, so ideally pump this up to plus 10 for the maximum pow. 
All right, let's talk those talismans then. The first one is to address the cost of spamming this. We want the skill FP cost reducing talisman, which is purchasable from the giant blacksmith before you get to the carrier manor in Lyurnia. That one is simple to get a hold of. After that, the other three exist for boosting the damage significantly. It is, of course, fire damage. So what we're after is the fire scorpion talisman. You get this from a body in in Fort Laid in Mount Gelmia over on the left. It is very Patamish. You just run on in, run to it, and pick it up. All's well and good. This gives a huge 12% buff to fire damage. Then we want another talisman that is quite nichely situationally perfect for this build. The Ritual Sword Talisman. This gives you more damage when you are at full health and you will be full health more than most other weapons using this because it consistently steals health as, you know, do the entire thing that you're doing. And the boost is appreciable, so it's just perfect. This you get from a set of ruins in the Altus Highlands. Simply run into them, find the steps, go down the steps, beat the boss, and is in a chest past the boss. Again, another fairly simple one. Next up then is when it gets a little bit more complex. Technically, this talent will be perfect for any build that relies on an Ashes of War a skill being spammed. It is the Shard of Alexander. Sorry, I, I should give him his full title. I am the great Jar Warrior, Iron Fist Alexander. There we go, that's, that's much more proper. Of course, one of the best characters in the game, even with his penchant for constantly eating bodies. To get this, you have to finish a fairly long quest line, one that will take you all the way to Faram Azula and near the end of the game, which I appreciate is quite the investment, and to be fair, this isn't exactly required for this, it's just the icing on the cake. I'll take a quick detour now to recommend a talisman to replace this if you don't want to get this, and this replacement talisman is also better when you're not doing a boss, but just clearing a level and fighting lots of different little enemies on your way to said boss. For this, then, what we want is the Ancestral Spirit's Horn, a talisman you get from trading in a different remembrance, and this gives you 3 FP back when defeating an enemy. Combined with the cost-reducing talisman we already got, this really saves on both you needing Mind and Cerulean Flash, and lets you keep going for a lot, lot longer, which is really, really fantastic. So everything you kill with this pours in both health and FP to you, and it just feels fantastic. In order to get this, well, it is quite the convoluted treasure hunt, and I don't want to bloat this video too much. We actually did yesterday release a guide to getting this specific talisman, so I will link it down below. So, back to Alexander's Jar Shard. So, you want to beat Radan, and then after beating Radan, you can talk to Alexander, exhaust his dialogue options, and no, you don't need to find or interact with him before this at all, even though you can. The easiest way is just beat Radan, and he'll be there gobbling up the corpses at the end of the battle. After talking to him there, you want to go find him again in Lyurnia. He is just south of the Divine Tower, and is stuck in the ground. He'll ask for your help, you give him a smack, he says it's not working, you want to cover him in oil with some oil pot Oil pots you can get from a merchant down in the lowest part of Nokron. It's a short little run from the nearest site of Grace, a little bit of parkour, and down he is. The most expensive recipe has the recipe for the oil pots, and then you can craft them. Cover Alexander, smack him again, and out he will pop. That's all good, exhaust his dialogue. Then he will move to Mount Gelmia. He will go to the big lake of lava that normally contains a magma worm boss, so either kill it or run past it have another little talk to him, and once again exhaust the dialogue. Now he will move to Faram Azula, past the first mandatory boss of Faram Azula. Once you've progressed through Faram, killed that boss from this grace, it is a fair sprint that you have to go on in order to get to him. Eventually you will reach a imp key stone sword door that you must obviously feed the keys to, get past it a little bit further on through there, a little bit of jumping, and you will eventually come across Alexander. Now he will be ready to challenge you to glorious combat to test himself. Agree, beat him in the fight. He gets a really emotional, lovely send off. All vessels are destined to one day break. But the great Alexander 
lived as a warrior to his last. <laughs> and reward you with this talisman that massively boosts the damage of skills. And that is really awesome to have. I realize that was quite the journey, quite the mouthful. I hope it made sense, and now you are ready. You've got an FP reducing cost talisman. You've got a fire damage boosting talisman. You've got a damage boosting talisman at full health, and you've got a skill damage boosting talisman. Now you simply run round mowing down enemies with this huge, easy to hit blast of fire, lava, magma eruption in a line, and then when you get to bosses, blast through their health too. It's simple, it's effective, it is fun, and it is well worth your time. And hell, if you can connect with someone in PvP with this, it will also do a metric ton of damage to them too, and in some cases you'll get some fairly comfortable one-shots, which is a lot of fun as well. So I hope you enjoyed this, I hope it's inspiring at the very least, it is something that you would like to make, and until next time, there is so many more build ideas that I have, that I want to share with you, that I want to go over, and they're all ridiculous, and it's great, and god I love Elden Ring. Please like, hit the bell, subscribe, so you don't miss any of the future goodness and please consider supporting this channel and what we do on patreon down below until we meet again a good boy Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye <laughs>